It's got selling a used copy of uh, Octopath Traveler for 50 bucks on SA, and it's like, you know, I can order a new one for 60, right? I guess you can probably find a new one for 50 somewhere. Well, I assume we used one for 55 at like GameStop, right? Or Yeah, what's the ship? Uh, Dr. Five Traveler, 53 euros. And probably not worth it. Uh, I'm sure it's nice. fine. The demo's really good. Not my kind of game. It's a game where if you apply any pressure whatsoever to the plot, it falls apart. So and if I remember right, What the fuck games have you been playing where, like, they fall apart that easy? It's... No, I'm saying it's a Japanese RPG, right? It's a JRPG. Yeah. They don't usually collapse with a stern look. I call for the Tales games or some of the Final Fantasy games. You mean, like, Final Fantasy XV? Didn't tell you, I never played it. I never played that one either, dude. Be the ones that people really didn't like anyway. Well, um, they're the biggest selling ones. Because they were uh, some of the most recent ones. I guess Pokemon, right? No one really cares. Actually, Pokemon's plot's actually fairly coherent. Yeah. I mean, I mean, no one cares was... in that there's no real criticism of them. So I guess, yeah, Pokemon's like this JRPG device. I can't lie, I always consider it more of an adventure game because there didn't really seem that many Three hostiles remaining. RPG options. It's an RPG, but... Pokemon? Yeah, it's an RPG. It's Japanese. I mean, Pokemon Go doesn't count, sure, but... Pokemon does. Op 4 eliminated. Yeah, like, which one was it? Tales of Berseria seemed to have a pretty solid plot. Tales of Berseria's plot's fairly good. The game that it's a prequel to apparently wasn't, but... Don't care. I'm trying to actually think of other GRPGs like that are big. Dragon Quest. Yeah, Dragon Quest. Yeah, yeah, those don't really get any complaints, right? Well, yeah, no, it's just it. it's a. Octopath Traveler falls apart because there's no reason for a lot of those companions to be helping each other. Like, the holy rolling priest that is doing it to save her church isn't gonna go roll along with the assassin on a, on a hit job. Well, it isn't, it also isn't really... Awesome. also isn't really that much interaction between the characters, is there? Not to my knowledge. There's a reason it's scoring like 60s and shit like that on the full game. After everybody was talking about how good the actual demo was, and then the full game just kind of shit. Yeah, the demo was good. So, maybe they just have the best parts in the demo? Boy. And if it's anything like I Am Setsuna, I Am Setsuna is a goddamn dumpster fire of the game. We are so hyped and excited. Yeah. Dark Id did a pretty good LP of that, taking on a part of why it was actually such a bad game too, which is the funny part. That's another JRPG. I guess not a big one though. I'm just really, still really sad that the port for the for the Secret of Mana remake and Chrono Trigger remakes to PC were so god awful. And as I was say, I am Setsuna wants so desperately to be Chrono Trigger to the point where it steals plot points from Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross 
the difference is, is Chrono Trigger worked so well because there was a lot of colorful characters and a lot of good writing and a lot of neat little touches that you could play. When, you, when in doubt, you could just say, oh no, it's the butterfly effects from all this time travel. Oh no, like, you dicking around in the past does change the future, and you can actually use that to your advantage. Matter of fact, one of the puzzles is um, going back to 65,000 BC and planting a rock or something like that in a specific area, then traveling to 1999 and grabbing it from the same area. The box of your food. Massive floor button. No, that's how you made one of the super weapons. With a rock. Going live. No, the stone is super rare because it has to absorb sunlight for a long, long time. Oh, so that's, good thing I have a, that's a good thing I have a time machine. Well, the, interest, the fun thing about the time machine is that the points that, except for like one of them, and there's some speculation as to why, basically all of the points in the time travel are relevant to levels. Like, the game, for being a fairly simple RPG, actually has a neat plot to it. And then you get, like, Breath of Fire 4 that has one of my all-time, like, competent villains. The main characters are actually kind of fuck-ups and get caught, rightfully called out for being fuck-ups. And, like, character arcs being done with minimal dialogue and shit like that. Sounds good. And then you get Nino Kuni, where the main character is the President of the United States. That gets transported to a fancy world and shoots down two cars with a gun. Uh, like Breath of Fire Four has got a Breath of Fire Four has got a great moment where Sias, um, the mercenary, is high, you know told, "Hey, watch the uh, princess and her companions." And so they tell him to watch, and he's been traveling with you for a bit, and he's curious about your party, but he's also pissed drunk, which is why it's hilarious that he's the strongest character in the game. Because you can use oh, this shining blade to just insta give a lot of dumb shit. <laughs> but, uh. You walk out of the door and he goes, Hi, I'm here to watch you. And your character's got to look at him and he doesn't move. And so your character starts inching out and Nina goes, Wait, why aren't you trying to stop us? He goes, I was told to watch you, not stop you. And it's like one of three lines of dialogue he's got unless you go out of your way to talk to him. Science is a great character. Except for the American version made him hiccup, like stutter and hiccup rather than having being, oh my god, hilariously sloshed drunk. Well then, English you hiccup when you're drunk, right? No. They just, they just basically didn't make explicit that he was a drunk. No, he stutters instead of being pissed drunk. Okay. Like, the Japanese version doesn't hide at all that he's just holy shit dr drunk. Completely an utterly chill face. Yeah, that sounds far from the course in localization. Yeah, when he switches sides, he gets the shit eating grit on his face, and he's just like, Yeah, I guess I'm gonna go along with him. These guys are my new friends. You think I'm joking? Three hostiles remaining. I guess. Uh -huh. But yeah, basically the most badass swordsman in the game, and he is hilariously drunk for 99% of it. Like, that shitty eating grin was so iconic that it made it into the manga adaption. Look at that. Op 4 eliminated. Friendly mission successful. But he has this quiet character arc that the game doesn't make a big deal of, but he goes from being a fairly amoral mercenary to following your character, and he's not entirely sure why he wants to help out, and that's kind of why he's following along helping out. To see why he's doing it. Yeah, it's an interesting character development, but 
part of what makes him interesting is most of his dialogue boxes are literally dot dot dot. If he's talking, it's gotten through to his, you know, drunk ass, happy, happy, uh, fun times feelings. 